Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. series taking a look at the book of first Peter looking at sort of what it is like to be a follower through the eyes of someone that fell down through the eyes of someone that really maybe missed the boat in an opportunity to support the Lord and God knew he would do that when he denied the Lord three times when Jesus was at arguably one of his weakest moments so for a guy to encourage me that has fallen down on his face, we might think, but has come to understand a loving God, I pay attention to that. I, I pay attention to others that I meet on a regular basis, that I know their faith, and, and knowing where they may have fallen down before and how they get up, dust themselves off, and get back after it again, I, I pay attention to that. Because clearly the Lord did some work in that person's life that I can learn from, that I can come to understand. We read the scriptures, we read understandings of, uh, of how maybe Israelites or other Christians or other followers of Jesus made mistakes and were forgiven. The beloved man after God's own heart, David, makes remarkable mistakes but is still loved by God and still shares what God does in our lives 
on a regular moment. If someone were to evaluate your life, a little quiz for you this morning, under a harsh spotlight of reality, what would they say that you place your trust in? Some might accuse me of Chicago Cubs. I get that. But let's get serious for a moment. If, if some kind of cosmic phone were to ring and declares that you only have a few minutes to live, they're beginning to carve the tombstone as we speak. What are they going to write? He put his trust in blank. She put her trust in what? How would you fill in the blank? On what are you basing your life? And what are you pushing, putting your trust? Whether or not it's chiseled out on a stone one day for us. Whether it is or not, it is being chiseled into our lives. And that's important for us. It's important for us to realize that individually, because together we make up the body of Christ. And my hope is today, as we have a conversation about this leader of the disciples, that, that shared with those that it's important for us to realize that the weakest moment of each of us affects the whole group. The healthiness, the spiritual healthiness of all of us is important because the way that we can be put together. When I was young, I, I, meaning in college, I, I did all kinds of construction jobs to pay for, for my college. Didn't pay for all of it. Thankfully, I had parents that loved me enough to help me with that. But in some of that work, I got to do what was called being a brick tender. I got to help the guys that were the masons that were putting the bricks, brick by brick. And we built a school. We built a, 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 a courthouse. And we built a jail cell. I thought, well, that's got to be done pretty well, right? It's going to have bad folks in there. But it was amazing to me that every single layer that was put on this was meticulous. These guys were artists. It had to be done exactly right, exactly straight for that wall to be strong on the top. The bottom had to be laid correctly. Each single brick had to be done the right way or the wall wouldn't work. As much as I didn't really love doing the work, I learned a lot by watching meticulous work done with these guys. So I really want us to think about that question. Be honest with yourself. You surely don't have to say it out loud. because Then you'd have to ex maybe explain to your wife a difficult conversation. What are you placing your trust in? Are you placing your trust in your intelligence? I'll give you some examples. Your talent, your reputation, maybe your money. The family name, right connections, for most of you, your good looks. Now you're wondering who I wasn't talking about. How about your good works? I'm placing my trust in the good work that I do. And you all do good work. The list could go on and on and on. But be honest with yourself. We want the right thing to be chiseled in that stone. We want it to say she put her trust in Jesus Christ. We're in church, that's the right answer. Whenever we have a children's message, that's the right answer. But is it the true answer? And this, to me, is what Peter was concerned with when he spoke out to the Sanhedrin in this message. He was concerned with the fact that where we are in our walk with the Lord is the most important thing that we can give back to the church. Because if we are that weak brick, that is holding up the wall, the whole thing comes down. Or, to be less dramatic, it isn't as effective as it would be if they all weren't in the same place. See, Peter declared the centrality of Jesus Christ, who Jesus Christ was, to be the most important thing for someone to focus their lives on because him as the cornerstone 
made that wall special or made that unit, that whole, that coming together special. It was to be based upon that. The psalmist declared, the stone you builders rejected, which has become the capstone. He's reminding him how it worked out when the Jews rejected the capstone. It didn't work out so good. So he's saying that here again. The Bible has all kinds of things that it, it, it titles our Lord. It references our Lord. He's described as the way and the truth and the life. He's described as the good shepherd, the living water, the Lord, the Savior. He's described as the high priest, the head of the body. All kinds of wonderful, amazing imagery. And here, Peter is referencing us back. Call the Lord what you will. As we are to build and be his body, he's the cornerstone. Think about that imagery. There's all kinds of senses that Peter is using to tell his story here. The stone, hard, steadfast, immovable. Didn't say the rock, but the stone. We, we, we read or we sang earlier of this stone, of this idea, the solid rock. My hope is built on nothing less. Then Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. That's what a cornerstone is. Something that you lean into. All other ground is sinking sand, which is why we have this great stone to be something to build upon. It's a graphic picture. Thinking of our Lord in just such a way. It's almost as if Peter needs to get off his chest. Look, I missed it. I messed up. I want you all to understand I'm Peter at this moment. I want you all to understand I really messed up when I left my Lord when he needed me most. I really left him and I changed what was important in my life at that moment when I denied him. I don't want that for you. I want you all to be united to understand why Jesus went to the cross, to understand that it was because of you. It was because of that love that we hold on to. This is how Peter is pouring his heart out. Peter is sharing this probably that he wants us to be a united us. Peter sees that it is important for the believers of Jesus Christ that we understand that Jesus is the reason we come together. The differences that may separate us are not the important parts of our lives. I can hear Peter speaking to us today. I can hear Peter saying, you know, I've done that. I've cast stones at myself. When Jesus said, love your neighbor as self, man, I hated myself. And that was a weak link in what was being built. He had to search himself. He had to forgive himself. I can see Peter's words when I read Psalm 139 in verse 23, search me, O God, know my heart, try me, know my thoughts, and see if there be any grievous way in me, and lead me in the way of everlasting. You see, he wants us to think about such things, I believe, because it doesn't do us any good to be separate and apart. We are not meant to be broken away from the group. We are meant to be a body together, strong together. I read his letters, and I, I, I just I, I feel inspired because of the way that he fell away, and the way that he wants to use anything that he learned, anything he can think of to help you to understand the love that Jesus has for us. Taste and see, he uses from the psalm. Taste and see. This cornerstone is all that. Have you ever been to a Costco before? Right. You could have lunch and never buy anything. You can walk around this store, and I'm sure it's the same around here. You can walk around, and they want you to taste and see this new butter is, is all that. Because they know that if you taste it, you'll like it. But it is that test. Think about that. It was Brussels sprouts when I was a kid. I tasted it. It didn't taste so good. I wasn't really excited about it going the rest of the way. 
Taste and see. Give it a try. See what you think. Arouse those senses is how Peter is speaking of this love that Jesus has for us. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see that the Lord is healing and loving and kind. Taste and see that God is bigger than we make him. Taste and see that when Jesus is the cornerstone of our lives, our lives have an opportunity to work out a little bit better. It just works out better. I remember one of the stories from Chronicles of Narnia. It's from a book called The Last Battle. The story of a number of dwarfs who just didn't believe in Aslan. Aslan was the, the Christ character. They were blind to reality, refusing to be taken in by those believers. I, I love the way it puts that. Aslan observes all this. It says, Aslan raised his head and shook his mane. Instantly, a glorious feast appeared on the dwarf's knees. Pies and tongues and pigeons and trifles and ices. And each dwarf had a goblet of good wine in his right hand. But it wasn't much use. They began eating and drinking greedily. But it was clear that they couldn't taste it properly. They thought they were eating and drinking only the sort of things that you might find in a stable. One said he was trying to eat hay. Another said he had gotten a bit of an old turnip. And a third said he had found a raw cabbage leaf. And they raised golden goblets to their lips. And they said, ugh, fancy drinking water out of a trough that a donkey's been at. They weren't able to taste what was in front of them. They weren't able to see. They weren't able to understand. They weren't able to register. The ability to taste and smell our food is vitally important. I don't know if we all realize that. Just how important taste is. To, and I, I believe taste is important or I wouldn't anyway, be carrying the weight that I am. Taste is something that's interesting though. For Peter to use the idea of taste, you have to choose to taste something. Now I know as much as my mom tried when we were young, she tried to force us to taste mixed vegetables. But you, you have to choose. You have to make a conscious choice to put something in your mouth and taste it. And Peter is saying it is just that good. It is that important. For our eating, sight, smell, touch, all of it is important to the sense of smell. We can see things that we never intended to see. We can hear things that we didn't wish we heard. But to taste... We have to choose for that to happen. Peter's saying, taste. You have to choose to understand the love that is before you. The love of Christ. Peter goes on then to explain the spiritual house. He goes on to speak to the church. He goes on to give an encouragement for unity. For us being unified with who we are. He describes as one rejected by man, chosen by God, precious to him. He begins the conversation to say, look, it's important for you all to understand why you came together. It's because of what God first did for us. It's because of what first happened. Not by what any of you all did. You all are great people. I've enjoyed being around you all, but it's not about your actions. It's about what Christ did for us and does for us first God loved us which is how we are able to love that's how it works Paul goes on to or Peter goes on to declare that the house of us who believe and see Jesus as the cornerstone are precious it's important Jesus said that he was going to build the church on the statements that Peter made it's important for us to understand because there is that stone and we, we oftentimes, we read Scripture and we wonder, what's that doing there? Taste and see. And then we're going to talk about a stone being living stones and, 
and Peter's the rock. What's up with that? It isn't contrived. It's solid. It's impervious. God intended the stone for a sure foundation, it says in Isaiah 28. Genesis 49, from thence is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. God gave us this vision of Jesus being the stone. And the builders rejected the stone. The builders who were building up rejected. It didn't discourage Peter. It didn't discourage. Many shall stumble, fall, be broken, and be snared and be taken. It says in Isaiah. But to us who believe the Lord is the living stone, this allowed indeed of men chosen by God, precious. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. As a church, do we focus on him? Do we focus on programs? Do we focus on our wonderful music, our wonderful staff, other staff? Our beautiful facilities? Or do we focus on the cornerstone? Peter says, as you come to him, the living stone rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, you also, the living stones. Friends, that's who we become when we become like Christ. More and more daily we study the word, we study God's word, we study the scriptures. Why? We don't need to know more stuff. We need to be transformed into the likeness of Christ. Peter is so adamant that we understand this transition and this transformation. First, we are a chosen people because we are to be his body here on earth, helping to reach others. God chose you and me to reach a world that doesn't know him yet. God chose you and me through this unity to work through, to love others, to love him. But I love how Peter closes out his statement. I urge you, I urge you, I implore you, put whatever word you want in there. I urge you, as aliens and strangers, abstain from sinful desires. A.K.A. disowning the Lord when he needs you the most. That war against your soul, he knows what he's talking about. Live such lives that as the pagans see you, they read your lives. We've said often here that we're going to love others to love Christ. And it's quite possible that the way we live our lives is the only way that someone is going to read the Bible. Maybe. Why is it that those people act that way? Why is it that they love people so much? What is it about that? Peter wants us to understand this. Peter wants us to taste and see. Jesus is the living stone. And people will see that foundation. It's a famous story from Sparta. A Spartan king boasted to a visiting monarch about the walls of Sparta. The visiting monarch looked around and could see no walls. He said to the Spartan king, where are these walls about which you speak and you boast so much? The Spartan king pointed at his bodyguard of magnificent Spartan troops and said, these are the walls of Sparta. And every man of them a brick. As long as a brick lies by itself, it's useless. It only becomes of use when it is built into a building. You and I, as living stones, must not remain alone, but we must be privileged to be built into the building, building the church. You and I are the church with Jesus Christ as the cornerstone. My friends, I hope that in everything that we do, we plead with those that see our, see our lives. Come, taste and see for yourself. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to that pastor up there rambling. Come and taste and see for yourself the goodness of God. 
Let's pray together. Loving God, we do thank you so much for your love. We thank you that whenever we feel that we have come to some kind of a pinnacle of our lives, that we have done this, we have reached that, we have become this, Lord, we thank you that you acted first. You loved us first. You cared first. Lord, be the center of our lives. Be the foundation with which we can build. Lord, be our cornerstone. That we might invite others to your feast. And bid them to come taste and see. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We have another new one today that is pretty easy to learn to sing. So catch it as you can.